Hello, I'm Grace Nystrom with Bank of America and this year's uh, chair of the Latin American Chamber of Commerce. Dina, thank you for taking the time to join us at the 2020 Latin American Chamber of Commerce Mid-Year Conference Fireside Chat. Uh, what a privilege it is for me to be leading the conversation with you as our Mecklenburg County Manager, Dina Diorio. Dina, for everyone's benefit, can you tell us about yourself, the county, and your role at the county? Sure. Well, Grace, it's always good to see you, even if it's virtual. So I just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, and as you said, I am the Mecklenburg County Manager. Uh, I have served in that role for uh, just about six and a half years. Um, I've been with the county uh, for 13 years. Uh, so I have a really good understanding of how the county works. And as my role uh, as county manager, I really serve as the chief executive officer. So I'm responsible for making sure all the services get delivered, that all of our community needs get met through those services. I uh, work closely with the Board of County Commissioners. Um, they are my bosses and I have to make sure that I um, implement all of their policy uh, directions to me. I'm also responsible for managing um, a budget of about $1.6 billion, um, as well as manage a workforce of about 5,700 employees. And so it uh, keeps me busy, uh, but um, I love it. It's my passion uh, and I can't, uh, I can't thank them enough for have giving me this opportunity. Thank you for that. You know, Tina, the last three months have been extremely challenging with the health crisis and most recently the civil unrest. Can you share with our audience what this has been like for you personally and of course for the county? Well, you know, something like, like a pandemic, you don't train for that. You go to school, you do all the things you need to do, but they don't train you for this. And so you just have to really rely on your instincts. And when we started this back in February, you know, we started planning for this pandemic before we ever had a case here in Mecklenburg County. Uh, but when you look back and you look about where we were and the guidance we were getting from the CDC at the time um, and the information that we were getting, I mean, we have, we have come in a completely different direction. Uh, so when we first started this, um, you know, the CDC at the time said that there was a low risk um, to the United States and that we, we shouldn't worry. Um, and it was really all about what was happening internationally. And if we stopped international travelers from coming to the United States, you know, we would have a low risk of infection here uh, in the United States. And it, you know, you look back and it's only been about 90 days and you can see how everything has changed. Our world has changed. And so, um, you know, you, you know, for me personally, it's been, you know, you just kind of keep doing the work. You have to just keep focused on, uh, you know, what's going on and trying to make sure that, you know, we're responding to the information that we're getting and working with our partners. We, we built an infrastructure uh, to really allow us to stay in touch with our hospital systems, our six towns, the city of Charlotte, emergency management, um, a medic. You know, we have all these people at the table who have been talking to each other, um, you know, every day for 90 days, um, just making sure that we have all the data and all the information and able to respond quickly. Uh, and really being able to communicate to the public about what's going on. We really felt like transparency was an incredibly important part of this process to make sure that the public knew exactly what was going on. So uh, it's, been, uh, it's been 90 days, but it feels like 90 years sometimes. And so it gets, it gets tiring. Um, and you know, my job is to really keep everybody pumped up and keep everybody focused. And sometimes you know, that can be hard you know, to try to stay positive when um, everybody around you, um, not always, but sometimes people are not always positive and you know, you've got to be the constant cheerleader and the constant leader um, and the constant communicator uh, and just hope that you're making the best decisions that you can for yourself and your community. So it, it's been a very, very interesting, interesting time. Okay, thank you for that. You know, so as a county manager, what has your experience been like during this time of uncertainty? And what would you say is your biggest challenge that you're faced with today? Well, I mean, I think when, when you look at it, you know, we really have two responsibilities. So the first is because public health falls under the county, we have responsibility for managing the pandemic for the county, right? So my health director is the incident commander, and so really making sure that we're managing the pandemic to the best of our ability. But on the other side, I'm also a CEO of a business. I have 5,700 employees, like I said, a budget of $1.7 billion. We have critical mandated services that we have to continue to provide. So the challenge has been managing the pandemic, but also making sure 
that those critical services to our community continue to get provided um, in very different ways that we had no idea that we were able to do. So we went uh, completely virtual. You know, we took a county of, you know, multiple services that cross all different lines of business. You know, we're not one business. Uh, we are multiple lines of business. Um, and providing all of those services virtually to our community um, in very, very uh, short order. You know, we deployed over a thousand laptops to employees and cell phones um, to allow them to work from home, uh, but making sure that we still provided all those services. Services that uh, we didn't know we could provide online, we're able to provide online, particularly health and human services. So people being able to um, apply for, you know, food assistance and Medicaid and work first, you know, all those services that are critical, uh, critical supports to people in need in this community, were able to continue to be provided uh, during this pandemic. Um, and as the pandemic progressed, you know, finding that so many people were losing their jobs, our services became even more critical. Uh, mm -hmm. People were accessing services that never had to access them before and making sure we were available and we were there for people. Um, and our employees never missed a beat. I cannot tell you how proud I have been of the employees of Mecklenburg County who have worked so incredibly hard to keep the trains running, uh, even when trying to take care of their own families. Um, you know, schools were out, they had their children to take care of. They may have had a spouse or a significant other who lost their job. And so our employees were also impacted in significant ways, um, but really did an awesome job of keeping everything moving. And uh, it's, it's amazing what people can do when they're really challenged to do what they need to do. And so it's been, uh, it's been amazing to watch and it's been incredibly gratifying. Well, congratulations for that because it's a huge undertaking. So thanks for your leadership. So as a result of the current environment, has this encouraged or required you to reassess the county's goals for the remainder of 2020 and into 2021? Well, it, it, that's a really interesting question because, you know, the Board of County Commissioners is now really focused on uh, COVID-19 resilience and recovery. And so they've created a task force of 23 members that will be really working on how does our community rebound and recover. Um, and, it's, and it's not the new normal. You know, how do, we be, how do we operate differently in light of what we've seen in COVID-19? And the, and the task force will be focusing on things like early childhood education, human services, small business, working families, um, and really focusing on the areas that the county is responsible for. So uh, we're still gonna continue to do the things that we've always done, but we really are gonna start looking at how we can build a more resilient community. Uh, so that's really gonna be very different. Um, they've appropriated a lot of money for things like food deserts. Um, it's been something that we've talked about for a long time. But we've seen um, in certain communities, African-American communities particularly, that don't have access to healthy foods were disproportionately impacted by COVID. If they had access to healthy foods, you know, would we have seen a different outcome? Right. Access to healthcare. Um, and, and all of those things that um, we think contributed to some of the things that we're seeing um, in our community, could we have prevented some of that? We're also seeing that in the, uh, in the Latino community. We're seeing a very high uh, rate of cases in the Latino community. And what are those things that are causing that? And how do we make the population more resilient in the future so that if we do have another pandemic and they say it's not if, it's when, how do we make sure that our community is better positioned to handle that than we were the first time? Um, I think we handled the pandemic well based on what we knew at the time and how, we've you know, how we had resources to do so but we want to be better next time. So the answer to your question is absolutely yes. We want a more resilient community that can manage through a crisis like this more effectively in the future. Thank you for that. So, you know, as a local leader, what advice do you have for the community and for business owners to help them advance their cause? Well, you know, we can't give up. You know, we have, before the pandemic hit, we had the most one of the most vibrant communities in the country. Our economy is strong. We have a wonderful quality of life. And you know, the fundamentals of this community are still there. And so we just have to continue to work um, you know, and find ways that we can help each other. Uh, you know, nobody can do this alone. We need to get together and continue to provide support for each other so that everybody, uh, everybody can rebound. And I think that you've seen that 
So far, we have the COVID-19 relief fund that has been distributing uh, close to $20 million in this community. The city has done tremendous work on uh, small business grants. We're doing a lot of work in the area of small businesses. We're really trying to work with our six towns to make sure that everybody in all areas of the county, you know, have access to resources. Uh, really just digging in, uh, leaning forward, and really trying to do the best that we can. Check on your neighbors, check on your friends. Uh, you know, this is where we all need to come together so that we can rise up as a community um, and, and get this behind us. We're not there yet. You know, we can see based on, you know, what the cases are doing and, and you know, what's happening in the community that we've got more work to do. And, you know, we need people to do what we need them to do. We need people to wear their face coverings. We need people to wash their hands. We need people to practice social distancing. Uh, to protect yourself, but to protect others. And the data, it really bears that out. So we know that 89% of the cases that we're getting in Mecklenburg County are in people under the age of 59. Mm -hmm. But the people who are dying, 86% of those are over the age of 60. So while younger people can get the virus and can, and can get well, uh, it's our older population that is really, really impacted. And so when you think about it, don't just think about yourself, think about the other people around you. Think about your family members and your friends, uh, the people that you go to you know, worship with. You know, this impacts everybody. And so we need everybody to do the right thing so we can get behind this and, and move forward and, and be the great, the great county that we've always been. Oh, thank you for that. Um, so uh, let me ask you this. What would you say, based on our audience, do you have any final thoughts, any advice that you would give our audience um, in terms of, you know, think about, you know, we have members, we have small business, our members are you know, small business owners, entrepreneurs, um, and the broader community. What advice do you have for them? You know, this community is becoming a much larger part of Mecklenburg County. And, you know, we want to continue to embrace um, everything the Latin American community brings to this community. And we want uh, you to be heard. We want you to have a seat at the table um, and we want you to be counted. And so this is my pitch for everybody to complete their 2020 census form uh, because that is the one way that everybody in this community gets to be counted regardless of your immigration status, your, you know, your origin, where you live. It is the great equalizer. Um, and so um, if I could leave you with one thought, I would ask you to complete your census form and I would ask you to encourage everybody who you know to do the same thing because that's what's gonna also help us in the future, bring resources to this community um, and really help us rebound because a lot of the dollars even that are flowing uh, to the county today during COVID were based on our population numbers. And so we know Mecklenburg County is bigger than it was in 2010. Uh, we know we have a much more diverse population than we did in 2010. And we want all of that information to be included in our 2020 census so we get the resources that we're entitled to um, as we move forward. It's going to be critically important. So, uh, so that's my advice, and I hope that you take it. Um, and if there's anything we can do to help you promote the census, we're absolutely happy to do it. So thank you for that opportunity. Great. Thank you very much. And Dina, we know how busy you are. Of course, these are challenging times for us uh, as not only Charlotte, state, the county, it's a global pandemic that we're dealing with, but cannot thank you enough for your time, uh, for your perspective. Uh, so Dina Diorio, Mecklenburg County Manager, thank you. Thank you, Grace, so much. Thank you again for giving me the opportunity. It was great. Thanks. So good to see you. You too.